Hello and welcome back to the Cinema 4D in Octane tutorial. Today we're going to be using some height maps and creating some nice cerebral terrains incorporating some techniques from the past few tutorials. Yes, that means subsurface scattering. Don't worry about the world machine part, there's going to be a free height map on my self eye so you can follow along and get these same results straight away. There will also be a little terrain pack up there, including the project files from my last tutorial if you're looking for that subsurface scattering material and octane scatter preset. Be sure to check that out. Without further ado, let's make some sick renders. Okay, so here we are in cinema. Now, I'm not really going to go for the realistic look with these mountains, which is why I chose the word cerebral. Uh, I would have chose abstract, but um, I we all use abstract a little bit too much, so let's ditch abstract and go with cerebral for a while. So, I will switch to my octane workflow. And the main look I went for with these renders was, well, for one, I use a height map instead of a mesh because it's way easier in your system. And then I created these clusters of spheres that was kind of inspired by what I did a few weeks ago with those renders, which should be easy enough to follow along if you followed that. And it was kind of a similar material and in a few of the renders I actually used a similar material on the terrain itself. So what we'll do is we'll get started and we'll drop in a plane. And we'll get a render on the go of course. And what we can do is we're, gonna really, we're not really going to be spending much time here. Uh, most of this is going to be looking at the live viewer. What I'm going to do next is drop in a HDRI and right there I'm just using number 44 from Ultimate Skies. Nice kind of got a little pink tone to it, it's a, it's a really nice sky. So what I'll do is I will actually set up my render settings quickly. Uh, just for now we'll do 1 to 4 by 8 by, 8 by 10 and wabam that's the sense done. We'll drop in a camera. When you're looking at mountains even if we're not going for the realistic look we can go for the realistic perspective and you're not really going to be that close to them so unless you're on them you probably want to be in a pretty big lens next up diffuse texture we don't want anything glossy the way the light's going to hit this using the displacement diffuse is the way to go and you can actually kind of get a fake subsurface look just by letting the light hit this white texture so this displacement map i'm using here is available for free on my self ice store but there is some much better ones that I made, which will be a part of a little terrain pack that I put up there as well. So if you're interested in some uh, a, a bit more volume of assets, then go take a look at that. But if you just want to follow along and go and download this nice little height map here, and we don't want to mess with the gamma, we want to mess with the amount here. And we want to put that up to maybe 100 is probably safe. And we'll work in 4K. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is this really dodgy stuff around the side. So, uh, we'll make this editable and we'll hit KL. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to put in some uh, cuts around the sides. And we'll do it on this side too. And then come back to our selection. Well, hit UL. And we're just going to select all of them. And essentially we're just going to slice off the edges and that will stop uh, that art artifact thing there. So we'll just hit delete and it's gone. Simple. So back in the camera we can start, already we can start setting up a nice little angle. The terrain I did use this render on, it was an angle a little like this. I'm probably going to stay around the same area. And I'm going to rearrange my sky now. What I find quite important with these renders is not just the way the sky lights the terrain, but actually how we see the sky and the way the clouds look. I think it's very important to have some high quality HDRIs on and getting a good view of the sky. And I think I'm pretty comfortable with the way this looks currently. Next up, I, maybe you could just add a little bit of bloom and we can turn on the camera imager, but we won't do anything just yet. Next, maybe a good shout to add a daylight and you maybe just want to, you don't want to go as far as to put the daylight bang on the sun in the HDRI. You can do that in some cases, I do suggest that sometimes, but right now I'm just going to get the general direction and then we're going to slap make sky texture and that should be good enough. And then at least we've got some control over the main volume of shadows here. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to duplicate my camera and I'm going to come in for an even more zoom shot here. 
and we're gonna see what kind of looks we can start getting. I'm gonna add another camera, this time on a very, very wide lens. Well, for me, it's very wide at least. If we hit minus 90 on the P rotation there, and we should be 90 degrees, bang on above the terrain, and you can get some really nice angles or renders by doing that. If we maybe go to 90 here as well. Maybe stay in zero actually. Looks a little bit like frost. Very cool. And then, if you want to give the mountain a slight miniature look, you can by adding depth of field. That is the one thing that will happen. Uh, it messes with scale quite a lot when uh, we're using aperture. So to get a look like that, for some reason, it looks like frost, which is pretty cool. I will name my cameras. And we'll come back to the first one. Maybe the second one. Maybe I will mess with the scale a bit this time. Well, aperture. Let's see what kind of cool looks we can get. Now, because there is actually no geometry being sprung up here, it can be a little hard to rotate around the scene and it can get a little bit annoying. Personally, just use the, I would suggest just use the values here. It'll save you a lot of hassle because what will happen is you'll try and spin around and you'll just do this because there's no object to spin around. So in theory, you could drop in, uh, maybe not a cube, but a sphere and then turn it off in that view like that and then at least you do have something but honestly just use the values much easier before we do anything to the texture of these mountains i am going to leave them white for this of course if you do download the displacement map it will come with the color maps and all that jazz as well and the normals one thing i will do on that note is bring in the normal so the normal just helps hype up that detail a little bit most of the times I've done this, I've approached it with kind of a white look on the mountains. But what I might do is give it a slight tint there towards pink, or I'll maybe just make it white. Adding a dirt map on a really, really low strength can help just bring out a little bit of the detail in the mountains. And that was also something I did in most of the renders. But of course, the cluster of spheres was a big part of them. So. It was very, very easy to create these. I cloned a couple spheres around a relatively larger sphere at a cool kind of focal point. I might do a rather big cluster this time. Pop in a cloner and we'll set it to object. <laughs> Pop the big sphere in there. Make both of these editable. Turn the big sphere off. Maybe scale it down a little bit actually. Just till they start to touch a bit more. And then turn it to render instance. And you're gonna have no problem seeing the spheres in the picture viewer now. We can just add a random there. Put these to zero. Get a bit of scale variation. And now we can get to work on the material. So of course, it's a rather simple setup. All we're gonna do is get some light passing through them. So in a mixed material, we'll drop in two other materials. We'll make the second one specular. We'll set up the index and turn on fake shadows. And we will put in a scattering medium with a couple different RGB spectrums. Now, this is a good way to inject some color into the scene. So it's probably best to maybe make it a nice bright color scene will be absolutely dazzling. So what we'll do is plug the scattering medium in and we'll pop the mixed material on. We'll come to maybe something around 0 0.3, 0 0.2 on the float. Bring that density down a bit and we'll start putting some color in. One thing that's also quite important is the roughness here on the glass. So something maybe around 0.6 will really help sell that. Although the way the lighting is set up right now, it's kind of complementing not much roughness. So we'll maybe just pop a bit on there. Typically, 
a lot looks much better, but I like the way this looks right now. What I may do as well is just bring down the density a little bit more. If we pop a bit closer towards the glass, how does it look further up? Okay, I'm going to go further up just to create a bit more variation amongst them. So there's some darker ones. And then we can maybe set up another camera angle. I set up camera angles to work in and then I kind of set up ones where I'm... See, look, I just did what I said. What I said. What happens? No, nope, don't like that. Uh, I usually set up some different ones that I think would look slightly better towards final render which is kind of what I'm doing now. I'm going quite quick. You have to, for the sake of the tutorial, so I can keep your attention. Don't want to keep you here forever. Maybe something like this. Tell our camera. We'll center that. And then we won't work destructively, so we'll just do it a bit more. Go a bit closer to the ground. stuff going on what we can do now is add a little bit of bloom desaturate the picture a tiny little bit just to get rid of some of what's going on here and we can maybe bring in a lot one that i've been using is the journalist one from the free grayscale gorilla LUTs. and you bring it down to somewhere around 0.3 and it looks quite nice we can put a little bit of contrast in the scene here too and it's looking quite nice although this is absolutely saturated through the roof here and it doesn't look very nice. And that's where the roughness comes in useful. So we'll just pop that to a bit point one and get rid of that horrible specular going on there. We'll duplicate the camera again, see what other kind of shots we can make out of this. Maybe something slightly, well, quite a lot. The Analog 3 LUT adds a nice pink tone so if you're using the same HDRI as me and you're going for the same colors, it's a really good option to go with. In fact, I would maybe use it in this angle as well, as that was what I did in one of the renders. And we can do the same here. In that above camera, what we can do is just kind of focus it on the spheres as well and play with the aperture a bit. And again, bring in that same LUT. That looks somewhat okay. Not very keen on that angle here though. What I do like is these bottom three cameras, so we'll just box them up just now and stay focused on these. And I am gonna pick this camera as our main protagonist here. Funny word to use. Now, inside the mountain material, of course, through my tutorials, surely you know how to get light passing through your materials by now. I do it a lot. So we're gonna do the same thing here. As we always do, you want to plug the displacement through here, otherwise it won't work. Keep it plugged in there though, so it'll work by itself. Pop it on there, and put in a float. And you just seen me do it a few minutes ago, we're going to do the exact same thing. Big shadows, a lot of roughness, a scattering medium few different RGB spectrums, we'll keep a separate one for the transmission just in case we hypersaturate anything by accident. For now I'm going to leave them white and now we can maybe bring the density down a little bit somewhere around. Is 16 too low? I don't know. That does look pretty cool. We'll maybe go up to the 20s. Double it. Come a bit closer. Make it a lot more rough. I'm going to get rid of the aperture or at least most of it and you're getting a pretty nice look now and this was kind of all i did for that initial composition of course there is a lot more you could do with it very cerebral it's very nice you did see in one of my renders i used the spline and then i cloned the spheres along the spline going through and it created a nice kind of trail Again, you just use the object, but draw in a spline and you'll get some nice results doing that as well. That adds a bit of focus and drive to the scene. One thing that's nice about getting light to pass through the mountains here 
is it kind of makes it look a bit frosty, which is awesome. And just to check from some of the other angles. Okay, that gives you the basic rundown of creating these nice cerebral terrain renders in Cinema 4D and Octane. Surely you can get a mirrored result very quickly following along, doing what I did. I hope the height map comes in useful. If you do, I do suggest to maybe check out the other terrains that I've got up there and all of my other products for that matter. The support on the Selfie store helps me a ton and inspires me to keep making these tutorials. I'm trying to make them shorter, quicker, better. I'm trying to be more vocal, I'm trying to be more myself. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm gonna be back very soon with another one. And I'm gonna try and get as many out as I can. Be sure to send me your renders. I wanna see what dope imagery you're making. I wanna see all of it. Check out my Instagram, my website. Of course, the Selfie. And without further ado, I will see you in the next tutorial. Go create some sick renders. Do it, do it, do it, do it. I keep down first. I see you, I evil when I converse. Not today, say. This how God works. Play my position with his giving with no concerns. Go, 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 go. Set it out. Top of the morning, I'm gonna set it out. You living born, I'm gonna set it out. When I'm scoring, I'm gonna set it out Like soldiers torn, I'm gonna set it out